we would like to take a few minutes to pay tribute to some of the exceptional COVID-19 warriors. Our board of directors, Mr. Suhas Tuljapurkar and Mr. Ramesh Sharma, welcome Mr. Prakash Singh, Mr. Raman Ganga Khedkar, Mr. N. Ramachandra, Mr. K. Venkatesham. Let's hear their message to us in the midst of this pandemic. Namaste ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this Compliance 1010 event. I'm privileged to have with me my friend and my batchmate, Mr. Ramachandran with us. He's an IPS officer who has served with great distinction through his entire career. He retired as DGP Meghalaya. And after retiring, he did not sit quiet at home, but founded a think tank called Indian Police Foundation, which was inaugurated by the Honorable Home Minister of India, Mr. Rajnath Singh in October 2015. And ever since then, he has been relentlessly pursuing as a think tank, associating a number of retired and serving officers in pursuit of how to bring about excellence in policing, how to make the police more people friendly, how to make it more efficient and effective. For Mr. Ramchandran and for the audience here, a few words about the event, Compliance 2010. This event was conceived by Mr. Suhas Tulzapurkar, who is the founder director of Legacy Services Private Limited. He is a corporate lawyer, well known at that. And I call him a compliance ideologue par excellence. He is the one who conceived of this notion of holding this event on the every 10th day of 10th month, that is 1010, which symbolizes also that as far as compliance is concerned, you cannot have compliance nine out of 10, it has to be 10 out of 10, because even one compliance can lead to disastrous results. On this day, we celebrate uh, the compliance professionals, the companies, which are compliant and we give out 80 awards this year we are going to give out and these awards are kind of candles that we light which we hope in turn will light several thousands of candles and several lakhs of candles to dispel this ignorance about compliance and to bring, bring about a sea change in the compliance in the corporate world. The highest award that is given during this occasion is the Compliance Crusader Award. And you'll be glad to know that this, this award in the past have been given to industry stalwarts such as Dr. R.A. Mashelkar, Mr. Deepak Parekh, Mr. Narayan Murthy, Mr. Damodaran, Mr. Adi Godrej, and Ms. Anu Aga. The reason why we are holding this small little event is we in the legacies, the Bombay Stock Exchange, which is our event partner, and th more than 1,000 companies felt that we have to salute and felicitate and express our gratitude to the Indian police force, which has worked so tirelessly and exposed itself to such risks during lockdown and even thereafter. Uh, we want to express our gratitude on this occasion and we also want to honor the Indian police for keeping us safe during these turbulent times. I would now request Mr. Ramchandran to talk a little about his experience, his knowledge, because he's been pursuing this subject very avidly throughout the COVID times. Over to you, Mr. Ramchandran. Thank you for this opportunity. Ever since the COVID-19 pandemic broke out. You must have seen our police forces on the front lines doing everything possible to prevent the spread of the virus and protecting our citizens. Although the police themselves had very little prior specialized training, they very quickly had adapted fairly flexible practices to implement the lockdown enforcing social distancing, contact tracing, creating public awareness, 
managing containment zones, protecting hospitals and health workers, as well as keeping the, most importantly, keeping the essential services and supply chains function. It's very important. You might recall that during the very early days of the lockdown and uh, when, the, when the migrant crisis erupted, the police forces throughout the country was to the occasion, carrying out extensive humanitarian work, providing shelter, reaching food and medicines, and various other forms of help to those in need. You will all appreciate that the very nature of policing, policing profession itself, makes the police personnel particularly vulnerable to infections. They are required to physically stop crowds, grapple with demonstrators, often assist in transporting the sick people to hospitals and even transporting dead bodies. So you will know how vulnerable they are to this uh, virus infection. I must inform you today that more than 700, in fact, 710 persons as of yesterday, 710 police personnel have lost their lives due to COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, almost 1,40,000 police personnel have been infected, police and CAPF personnel have been infected during this pandemic. This means that police personnel account for 2% of the total COVID-19 infections in the country. That is a huge number. 2% of the entire infections in the country are police personnel. But what is important is that in spite of suffering such large numbers of mortalities and morbidities within the forces, our police personnel continue to display the highest standards of dedication, motivation, and commitment to very selflessly serve and protect our people. Their levels of enthusiasm and devotion remain as strong as they were in the beginning of the pandemic. As I was mentioning, the Indian Police Foundation has been tracking the number of mortalities and morbidities in the uh, police forces because of this COVID-19 pandemic. And right from the beginning, we started under the Indian Police Foundation website, we have started a COVID-19 dashboard, which gives updated figures of morbidities and mortalities on a daily basis. These figures, as well as the documents that we have on pandemic policing are available for research and development, and especially for future police research. Now, as far as the police foundation itself is concerned, we have been extremely, uh, you know, interested in focusing on these morbidities and mortalities within the forces, because we believe that if the, uh, if the number of infections are not kept under control, it may affect the long-term operational continuity of police forces themselves. In fact, uh, last month we had conducted a major conference in which seven DGPs of various states and uh, cities, uh, police commissioners had participated in which these strategies were discussed. So uh, as far as the police foundation itself is concerned, as I was mentioning in the beginning, we have uh, this institution is, a, is not an exclusive policeman's club. It is a multidisciplinary group of professionals, both police officers as well as senior civil servants, academics, lawyers, industrialists. I mentioned to you, Mr. Deepak Parekh himself uh, uh, is one of our uh, esteemed members and he is uh, one of the members of the uh, IPF uh, executive committee. So like that, we have some very respected uh, you know, eminent persons from across the country who are 
giving the uh, you know strategic direction and governance of this police foundation now coming back to uh, uh, this endeavor of legacy i must say that it is extremely thoughtful on the part of legacy to have recognized the sacrifices of the indian police and to have decided to pay homage to this large number of police personnel who have made the supreme sacrifice uh, in the line of duty and also to honor those who have fought and conquered the infections so thank you legacy once again the indian police foundation will very solemnly do this duty to convey your gesture of recognition to all police chiefs police chiefs of states as well as central police organizations thank you very much for this opportunity thank you very much mr ramchandran for being with us today and finding time to give your message and the message of the ipf which is in fact doing an excellent job and i don't think uh, there are any other think tanks in this country which is totally devoted uh, to the police cause and police reforms we are very happy to hear that you will be conveying our message to the various police chiefs and of the states as well as the central police forces thank you very much for being with us thank you it's my privilege and honor today to have mr k venkatesham who was the former till very recently former commissioner of police pune and since i am based in pune i am quite aware as a citizen of this city the innovative initiatives that mr venkatesham has taken in this city uh, not only during the covid times where he ensured uh, police health and minimize the affliction due to this terrible pandemic but also apart from this i am quite aware of how he came out with innovative solutions for senior senior citizens for women and for all those weaker sections that needed his help prior to this posting he was commissioner of police in nagpur where also he was widely acclaimed and his work was widely recognized i can go on on and on at talking about the distinguished service of mr k venkatesham but i'll give it a pause here and talk about this particular event compliance 1010 as you are aware this event is held on the 10th day of the 10th month every year this is the 7th edition and the 10th day of the 10th month translates into 1010 so it is compliance 1010 this is also very significant and indicative of the fact that compliance cannot be 9 out of 10 it has to score 10 out of 10 marks because even one non compliance can lead to disastrous results this whole concept was conceived by mr suhas tulzapurkar who is a well known corporate lawyer and i choose to call him a compliance ideologue par excellence he thought that an event like this should be celebrated every year to congratulate compliance professionals and to spread a culture of compliance in the corporate world during the occasion we have master classes master quiz we have panel discussions we have keynote speeches by eminent people and we also have panel discussion on independent directors apart from the 80 award that we give this year we are giving out as many as 80 awards and with these 80 awards we hope to light 80 candles and in turn we are optimistic of the fact that these 80 candles in turn will light several thousands and several lakhs of candles of compliance of the message of compliance of the culture of compliance in the corporate world i must say here that the highest award 
that is given is that of the Compliance Crusader Award, which in the past have been awarded to industry stalwarts such as Dr. Mashelkar, Mr. Deepak Parekh, Mr. Narayan Murthy, Mr. Damodaran, Mr. Adi Godrej, and Ms. Anu Aga. Why we have invited Mr. Venkatesham, this distinguished police officer amongst us, is that we in the legacies, as well as our partner Bombay Stock Exchange, as well as thousand, more than 1,000 companies with us, we felt that this is an appropriate occasion to express our gratitude to the police forces of this country and particularly to the police forces of Maharashtra and Pune for the excellent job that they have done by risking their lives in trying to keep us safe. So it is as a matter of gratitude and to honor the Indian police that we have amongst us today, Mr. Venkateshan. I would now request Mr. Venkateshan to say a few words and give his message to the people at large on this occasion. Over to you, Mr. Venkateshan. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for inviting me for this Compliance 1010 event. And this we are celebrating in uh, 2020. And we started with 2020 vision initiated by uh, Abdul Kalam. And after that, we missed that vision. And now uh, we, are a, we have had to face COVID situation, which is completely unique to the world. Pandemic, which we heard or read in history uh, in uh, 1918 and 19, uh, till 1920. Not many details are available, but whatever we have heard, we were learning from that. When COVID struck, first case uh, in Pune was reported on March 9th. And I will be mostly talking on the COVID and it's uh, uh, the way police and Punekars reacted or responded to it. That is the thing I'm going to talk uh, in the, on this occasion. It was completely new, how it spreads. It was being formulated every day, WHO and ICMR were coming with new guidelines. With those guidelines, it is new learning every day, new unlearning and something new to be learned based on the day's experience and also experience of the doctors and guidelines from various expert agencies. So first thing came on 9th, uh, first case came after that we started along with other uh, members of the administration, ki what way we should react. First was the imposing of 144, that's what we thought even before lockdown was being discussed in the entire country. So we prepared a document and this is a different 144. 144 is a par common parlance we call curfew as we all know. So curfew is imposed in communal situations where the prime purpose of curfew is to create terror amongst the minds of people. So if we are, if the government decides to impose lockdown wherein people are asked to stay at home, completely vibrant life has to put to a complete pause. It's very, very difficult. There are pregnant people who require visits to hospitals diabetes patients who require uh, weekly twice or once they have to go for dialysis. There are people who are planned for chemotherapies, planned for heart surgeries. There are many marriages to take place. Many events, many life in entire government. So every individual has a particular need. Some are emergent, emergencies, some are urgent, some are absolutely required. And for many people, lower class and middle class debt the enemy was important. So during that time, the uh, lockdown was imposed. So we had to maintain, people will stay at home so that spread of COVID is less and less. So what we said is, okay, we sat with our officer, that one money, um, 23rd was Janta curfew or something like that. But a ninth first case came by 11th our meeting was on Google Meet, not the weekly meeting which we 150 officers sit together. We said we will do on Google Meet and talk. So first we let's follow. And in that during that time we decided we, our approach in this peculiar and unique circumstances will be polite but firm. We have to be extreme polite and be helpful to the people. Generally, police. 
main duty is maintenance of law and order, prevention and detection of crime. Service of citizens has been taken foremost place during this time. So polite but firm. So while we are ensuring that people are at home, we wanted to ensure that their absolutely urgent requirements are taken care of while sticking to the guidelines uh, which are issued for COVID. So on second day itself, we started WhatsApp number wherein people can approach in case of emergency so that they can be facilitated. By third day, we had a great company in Pune, Saibes. Say they created digital pass system because our service is very clear. We have to serve with the dignity. Nobody, if a person has an emergency in the house, he need not create, we need not beg somebody or request some um, influential person or uh, through some other means he will get the uh, digital pass, not the fair means. So we create a digital pass which was absolutely based on the merit and we could give in the entire lockdown period with the three lockdowns which we had uh, more than 5 lakh people. 8 lakh uh, requests we handled, 3 lakh we could not uh, accede to their request because they were. we felt that they were not genuine but all others we facilitated. This is one example I am giving. While doing this, the primary purpose is Police, what the lockdown, we ensure people are inside the house. The second requirement people came up with was daily wagers not getting food, transgenders not getting food, sexual workers not getting food. So those people we started, we, our officers came up with the idea that we will establish a social policing cell. We established a social policing cell which was non-existent in, for this purpose. We facilitated through the help of corporates, NGOs, we created a facility that anybody requiring food or groceries can call that number and our people will coordinate and got, get it delivered. Likewise, 16 lakh plus people, the groceries or food packets were provided during this lockdown. This is a number which I have, which is a very, very big number when compared to other agencies. But in that, NGOs played a major role and our constables played a major role. But during the entire lockdown, what we have seen is constables and officers coming out of their way and doing, uh, doing things which are beyond their family, beyond the duty, beyond the normal expectation. So what, for example, I will give you two, three examples in this. One day uh, during the uh, lockdown, a call ca came from Mumbai. Somebody was asking me, sir, we require medicines. From Mumbai, it call came and they, there is a thalassemia particular medicine which is available in Pune, not in Mumbai and they wanted me to take it and supply in Mumbai. So actually, to be frank with you, I shouted at him, if we are having our own problem in Pune, how can we help in Mumbai and sending, taking medicine and sending somebody? But I saw in my WhatsApp, he has already sent me a message. So I just forwarded it to my social policy cell and I did not tell them anything. But I found after two hours, this person calls me, sir, thank you very much and medicine is received. What are you talking? Sir, you told me, you gave me medicine Mumbai. So that is the level of commitment we have seen. One person, one uh, blind lady in Hadapsar area wanted her mother and father who were stuck in Sholapu to be brought uh, so that they can come and take care of her. So we can say we have given permission, they can come. But during that time, there was no vehicle, no buses, no scooters or no jeeps which were running. One of our constable went with his uh, vehicle, jeep and took that family and dropped them at their places. These are two examples. Many of many stories you must have read in the newspaper. Money helping the patients get the beds, helping people connect with their NRI children in the abroad, or performing last rites of some of the people who are uh, who died because of COVID. So many sort of service exemplary examples we could see during this time. Like sir said. 
more than 12000 senior citizens who are registered with us they were called every third day or seventh day to guide them what sort of care they can take or whether they require any help many people wanted somebody to go and take out money from atm and give them so that money was being given medicines were brought and given so likewise more than 12000 senior citizens who are registered with a barosa cell of pune police they were given uh, help in all sorts mane there is nothing which was asked ye police ka kaam nahi hai ye police ka kaam hai if a person is requesting making some request it was accepted this was about social policing enforcement of lockdown third major issue was migrant uh, population movement so migrant population movement we saw in some of the big metro cities people walking on the roads sleeping on the roads walking with bare foot but here in pune we saw our own constables and officer they were going with buses along with the jeeps and in the evening they will go out wherever people are seen they will be taken to the shelter given food and given their mobile number and assuring them that your transport will be arranged to we have arranged in a day or two or three days but till then shelter is there food is there so you need not worry and go out on the road so many basically while serving we wanted to maintain their dignity and which uh, we could achieve we did not see many photos of migrant population walking on the roads or sleeping on the roads from pune during this time that is migrant population is the third thing third fourth was in covid we have seen ki if i am getting uh, positive for the uh, corona the contact tracing is very very important internationally if i have contacted uh, corona the at least 17 to 18 my contacts have to be traced this is the mandate given to municipal authorities so we were we formed a cell in crime branch facility for accelerated contact tracing facting and this has traced contacts of more than 2.25 lakhs during this time every day they will take out if x person has become positive so they will trace out his contacts and give the contact numbers and the uh, addresses of those people so that those contacts could be you know, give, uh, checked for uh, any symptoms of these things fourth was important this is about fact contact tracing fifth was slums uh, created a peculiar challenge in slums physical distance maintenance is very very difficult and then educating them is a little difficult because we have to burst the myths of whatsapp messages and tell the truth what is happening what sort of care is required to be taken and that has to be contemporary we, we cannot just tell these three things and forget we have to tell in this slum so many cases have become positive so many contacts are traced these are the measures which we can take and this can be prevented and ex slum these measures were taken and today the cases are coming down this sort of contemporary messages we were communicating with smart bikes loud speaker and somebody will go and speak in native language or some video we will create a positive uh, person and recovered he will tell what sort of care should be taken so it is it was outreach program is a continuous thing and in slums we identified causes of contact uh, spreading the basic uh, apart from the proximity we found that uh, community toilets are the major thing which were creating problem so we created an army of more than 6500 special police officers who are citizen volunteers and specially authorized by Com uh, commissioner of police as special police officer and they would go around in the area and communicate to municipal authorities about this uh, community toilet is not cleaned or cleaned or what measures have to be taken continuously on this basis so they will not give we are all familiar in corporate world about to do list per day or per month or uh, targets key result areas and all those things here we created din reports do it now there is no time so if the toilet is not clean the photo is sent in that whatsapp group and somebody will monitor that that it is done immediately 
these are all beyond the regular work of police we said whatever is required we have to do that is the reason so slum policing din reports then uh, spreading the messages making them aware of the things these were the things which were being done while we are doing this in society there are various types of people collaboration is important doctors require different sort of assurance from people because nobody will go and beat them up and they require uh, facilities in hospitals that we facilitated then go for and other e-commerce uh, the people wanted help in the form of facilitating their supplies and also giving permissions to the boys delivery boys that was uh, done by having their meeting we had meeting later on when in the may opening up started we had continuous collaboration with various shops and grocery uh, people essential supplies basically milk and uh, vegetables these were all new challenges every day something will come we will find a solution so that it will be uh, sorted out and causing minimum inconvenience many societies we facilitated vegetable and grocery supplies to their gates so that they can take from the uh, persons itself then dial a taxi we created which is sanitized uh, providing sanitized vehicle on the lines of ola uber the dial a taxi was peculiar to pune which was mane which made more than 16000 uh, rides during that time so these are the various things which we have we had done which were beyond the normal but what we witnessed during this time is as a leader i can claim that all this happened because i was directing my force but i'll refrain from that because fact is a different thing here we have seen i was during this time i was asking one of the constable ke ye ye kaam pura tumhara nahi hai apna police ka kaam hi nahi hai apan kyon kar rahe log dusra mane koi boodi aurat ko ja ke medicine dena ya kisi ko ja ke kapde leke aake dena hai ya saman leke aake dena ya hamara kaam nahi hai kyon kar rahe to he says in marathi atnaitar kadi mane if not now when will we do this is his attitude and public also we saw everybody corporate world citizens coming out and telling sir police station mein jaate hain they come to our office and say ki what in what way can we can assist other people so many people have adopted slums and given okay entire sanitizers and mask we will provide some of the slums were adopted by people so all this what we have seen other day i was reading so i requested symbiosis institute of management to do research on this why people are behaving this way they want to help others beyond their own duty because in every crisis we always feel that people are uh, people become naked they do all sorts of crime and they just want to loot others but this time we saw mane the examples were quoted of orlan uh, floods but uh, we saw something different human beings are nice decent and healthy so we wanted symbiosis institute of management to do research and they have collected data and they are coming out with their findings but during this time in the last 15 days i read that human kind book by uh, robert robert bradger or something so he talks entire book ki every event every crisis human being is a decent and helping others every crisis shows that people want to help others and which we have seen during this time mane be it corporates be it doctors be it administration be it police right from constable to dgp everybody wants to help out of the way so from this also lot last five six items which i have mentioned now during this time our uh, pune police is helping people with plasma donation mane they have created a website where people who have recovered from covid register their names for donation and people who want they will register their names for requirement though it is matched and they will talk to each other and the plasma is provided last when i left it more than 259 people were provided through this this also dignity man a person need not beg hang around roam around circulate his number on whatsapp he just registers 
and police officers are ensuring that he gets plasma if required if it is advised by the doctors mane entire event has shown that service is supreme and human beings are decent and police if required will go out of the way to help people thank you very much thank you very much mr venkatesham uh, for sharing all your experiences and i have been a first hand witness of all that has been happening here in pune and that is why we thought of you as the ideal police officer to come and talk to us and talk to the people uh, and through you we want to express our gratitude obviously you have given us some insight into how policemen have risen above their duties as the that are prescribed to them they have gone out of their way and uh, what i liked about and what you said was that human beings are basically good we are basically good and when crisis comes we do respond in a very humane manner thank you very much for being with us and sharing us uh, with your thoughts and through you we express our gratitude to the in- entire indian police force particularly those of maharashtra and of course pune thank you very much thank you very much thank you very much uh, dr sanjay oak uh, for being part of this uh, program at uh, this event that we have just to explain uh, where we are coming from you see compliance 1010 is actually uh, celebrated every year on 10th of october as the compliance day where uh, the professionals uh, the corporate professionals who actually comply with all laws and i think uh, that's true even uh, we have some of the hospitals as our clients and we have been trying to articulate that on compliance you have to score 10 on 10 9.99 is not acceptable it's probably the same as in the healthcare industry or as for doctors that every patient that comes to you you have to score 10 on 10 9.99 is not acceptable i think it is with that view about 7 years ago we started uh, this campaign of uh, you know creating awareness across uh, almost about 1000 plus companies that we work with uh, and a lot of corporate executives join us in trying to understand and create knowledge session in trying to kind of make sure that uh, we are doing right things we are looking into mirror and saying that we are not going to compromise on compliance we are not going to compromise on ethical aspects so every year we we give compliance crusader as awards uh, this year obviously the event is digital in its nature but we thought we would fail if we do not kind of recognize or thank say thank you to all those doctors who have tirelessly worked during uh, the lockdown period during the covid-19 period and who have actually saved us we know even amongst the doctors community or healthcare specialists the people who have lost their lives but they have they continue to render the services now we can't obviously go back and say thank you to each and every doctor but we thought that we would call you here and request you to accept our gratitude sir uh, this is a gratitude from not only legacies and bombay stock exchange but it's from those 1000 plus clients that we work with the corporate sector didn't have too much of opportunity to say thank you sir we just want to express this gratitude and probably listen to you as the kind of head of the task force in state of maharashtra you had some challenges that you have tackled we have had the you know tremendous uh, you know misinformations that floated around plus a lot of people became aware as well as to what they should be doing what they should not be doing but still the i think the challenge is not over we are still grappling we are still struggling probably there is one thought process that we have had some learning uh, thanks to you and entire uh, kind of doctors community we have had some good learnings till now but that's not going to be enough probably we still have a larger challenge to face and sir we would like to therefore Uh, you know if there is any message that you would want to give uh, we would be happy to carry this across uh, 
but completely uh, we are overwhelmed with whatever all the doctors community have done and on everybody's behalf thank you very much once again sir uh, and saying thank you is not going to be enough for any one of us uh, we would continue to be very very grateful uh, sir over to you thank you very much really really thank you very much right at the earnest from the bottom of my heart on behalf of the entire medical fraternity convey my gratitude to legacy as well as our bsc partners who are honoring us today any honor ultimately gives you a stimulus but you know what is the best award the best award for any work done is truly an opportunity to do it more and that's the way the entire task force and the medical fraternity is looking at the pandemic well when we started way back in uh, march 2020 none of us actually knew what we are going to work against and then there were myriad of problems we did know the virus we did know whether it will sustain indian summer indian winter indian monsoon but it has proved us wrong we expected a touchdown sometime in june but we haven't really seen it even in september so i'm quite often asked questions as to sir when would the second wave come in i smile and say oh i don't know whether even the first one has ended and that's a fact of life what we have got is a fair amount of understanding of what causes it and what makes it spread in community so we are clear about the preventive aspect of the pandemic we have had several medicines to our disposal but by far and large we know that unless and until you choose correct drug at the correct timing and give it in the correct dosages the drugs are unlikely to work so the only medicine which has really proved the test of time till today is remdesivir which is to be started on the second day and not to be given beyond the ninth day now this is where people have gone wrong people have started medicines late have given them in inadequate dosages and have stopped them early or have given them too late when the viral replication is over people often ask me why these discrepancies of age why most of the people who have died are beyond 55 and 60 and the answer is that it's not the virus that kills it is the comorbidities and the complications that eventually kill you india is a capital of diabetes and so is mumbai plus the stresses of everyday life more than 50% of us are knowing or unknowingly hypertension so it is the hypertension diabetes thyroid problems and obesity which complicates the issue still further and what begins after second week of illness is the immunological response given by the body which in our parlance we call as cytokine storm it is this cytokine storm that kills an individual so therefore can we take this particular problem lightly certainly not significant number will be asymptomatic and significant number will be mildly symptomatic more than about 85% of them but they do need to be even under or in contact with a healthcare professional so when you opt for a home quarantine you undertake a responsibility to remain quarantined 
and to remain in contact with your healthcare advisor. All these points of sharing the same washroom with other family members, coming out in the night to see the TV serial, joining the relatives just for a sake of dinner, they defeat the very nucleus of home quarantine and that is why the disease spreads. If I get one positive case, I'm supposed to track 18 contacts. And if I track less, the disease spreads. That is a problem just now in our country. We are testing less and we are tracking less. And all our efforts of the task force are geared up right from the world go is on aggressive testing and active tracking. Let's not be afraid of positivity. It's not a sin. If you are positive, all that you need to do is isolate yourself and put yourself on appropriate medicines for a period of two weeks and you would be walking back healthy. Some of us who have had to go a moderate or a severe type of disease have had a very stormy period. Unfortunately, we have lost a few. But even those who have survived are expected to have some kind of sequelae. That is what is called as post-COVID syndrome. Now this can go on as long as 80 to 90 days. And this period is critical. You may have a cough. You may have difficulty in breathing. Your voice, timber and pitch may change. You may gasp for air while talking. You may feel extremely fatigued and drained out. Kind of fatigue which you have never experienced in your life. You don't feel like walking from room A to room B in your own apartment. All these are indicative of post-COVID syndrome sequelae. So almost all the hospitals now, in public as well as in private sector, have opened up special opinions of post-COVID syndrome monitoring and there is medical help available to you, either in the form of medicines or active physiotherapy and some amount of psychiatric help. Once a COVID hits you, and if it hits you badly, you virtually get shaken up. Your life subsequently is a second life. So the medical field has added years into your existence. But we want to add life into those years which you have got. And therefore, all of us need to work together. Very well said, sir. Uh, I must say, uh, you know, putting life back into individuals. Is, is going to be a tough, tough, tough task for all of us. Uh, from our uh, point of view or from our side, uh, if there is anything that we can do, we would be happy to support in your endeavors, sir. Support in the endeavors of the task force. Uh, on our own, what we can commit is that we are not going to do something stupid whereby the healthcare infrastructure gets overwhelmed. Uh, I think that's a commitment from all of us uh, as compliance professionals or corporate compliance professionals. Uh, we will not do anything stupid that, that puts uh, more pressure onto the current uh, infrastructure facilities and um, doctors. Uh, sir, I'm really uh, overwhelmed and I'm so grateful that you, you've shared this with all of us. Uh, that uh, no words are enough for me, honestly, sir. Uh, and I think uh, thank you and thank you again and again is, is the only thing that I can, I can express myself. Post uh, kind of lockdown getting released, I will come and take the liberty of seeing you personally. Uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm sure we'll exchange notes on what all uh, has happened and what all uh, ought to have been done correctly. Uh, more importantly, sir, from each one's perspective, I think the COVID has taught us uh, things which otherwise we would never have learned. And those are all good things. Uh, I've had uh, discussions with Dr. Marshalkar just now, and I think we looked at uh, what are the opportunities for corporate sector today to look at things positively. And as an optimist, I think we are moving in a very, very positive direction in terms of making this world better for everyone. 
uh, I'm really grateful and thank you very much, sir. Thanks. Namaste, ladies and gentlemen. I have the privilege and honor to welcome Mr. Prakash Singh amidst us. Mr. Prakash Singh needs no introduction, but yet uh, I cannot help but introduce him a little bit to you all. He has been one of the most distinguished IPS officers that the history of independent India has seen. He was, he retired as DG BSF. He was DGP Uttar Pradesh and he was also DGP Assam. And even after retirement, he has tirelessly and relentlessly pursued police reforms in this country. Consequently, in 1996, he filed a petition in the Supreme Court, a PIL with some others. And the judgment of that petition came in 2006, in which the Supreme Court was pleased to direct various, all the states in the country to bring about police reforms on certain parameters, on certain points. This would make the police uh, effective, efficient, and people friendly, and insulated from political interference. To you, sir, a little bit about the event and also our audience. Compliance 1010 is also an historical event for us in legacies as well as the corporate world. It is the brainchild of Mr. Suhas Tulza Purkar, who is a well-known corporate lawyer, and as I choose to call him, an ideologue par excellence in terms of compliance. He conceived of this idea of promoting the culture of compliance through this event on the 10th day of the 10th month every year. Now, so that translates into 10-10. And this 1010 becomes also symbolical in terms of compliance, that compliance has to be 10 out of 10. And even one non-compliance can lead to devastating results. During this occasion, we reward compliance professionals, ethical companies, compliant companies, and this year, we are proud to say that we are giving out 80 awards. These are 80 awards means that we are lighting 80 candles to dispel the darkness of non-compliance. And we hope that through these 80 candles and the people who watch uh, the program, the day long program that we'll be holding to become more and more compliant and therefore spread the culture of compliance in the entire Indian corporate world. The highest award is given as the Crusader, Compliance Crusader Award. And I'm happy to in inform you that this rewards, reward has been given to such industry stalwarts as Dr. Mashelkar, uh, Mr. Damodaran, Mr. Narayan Murthy, Mr. Deepak Parekh, Ms. Anu Aga, and Mr. Adi Godrej in the past. We, thought of organizing this little small event to express on behalf of Legacies, Bombay Stock Exchange, who is our event partner, and more than 1,000 companies to honor and express our gratitude, the Indian police force that has stood by us in this challenging times of COVID of this pandemic. In fact, they have risked a lot in terms of deaths and having been affected by the pandemic, by the virus, and yet they continued to serve us and to keep us safe. With these few words, sir, I would hand over to you to, to give us your message on this occasion. Over to you, Prakash Singh, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ramesh, uh, for introducing me. And uh, I would like to express my gratitude to 
uh, Ligasis for having organized this event. And uh, through this event, uh, the re recognition which they are extending to the policemen who have performed extremely difficult and I would even say hazardous duties during the current pandemic. Now this pandemic uh, was a new challenge for us, an absolutely new kind of uh, situation was thrown up. Uh, a situation to deal with which we had no standing orders, there were no SOPs, there were no standing operating procedures. So we really had to start from the scratch. And uh, actually most of the officers, uh, whatever they did, they did purely with their own individual initiative. The government had issued certain orders uh, regulatory orders about how the lockdown is to be enforced. So the police was entrusted with the with the unpleasant duty of enforcing the lockdown and ensuring that people stay behind uh, uh, doors and uh, do not come out in breach thereof. So the regulatory orders were enforced. In the process, of course, there were some difficulties initially, but then the Indian Police Foundation, uh, we, uh, we, we took stock of the situation and we issued some uh, kind of advisory to all the Directors generals of the uh, of the various states on what all they need to do, what all precautions they should take, and I must say they uh, they responded to our instructions, uh, and subsequently we found that the police performance improved, improved in the sense that not only we enforced the uh, clamp down, not only we enforced uh, the rules promulgated by the by the state governments that people should wear masks, that they should observe social distancing, that they should not come out beyond certain hours, that they should observe rules of quarantine, et cetera, et cetera, when all the regulatory orders were enforced. But uh, what was most heartening was that the police went out of their way to extend humanitarian assistance to people in need. I mean, senior citizens uh, who, were, uh, I mean, who were confined within the four walls of their house uh, sub medicines were supplied. It was ensured that they get the essential supplies of medicines. Uh, wherever provisions had to be distributed, uh, we saw to it that the supply chain uh, runs smoothly. Then there was massive movement of migrant labor. We had to deal with this uh, massive uh, movement of uh, uh, people from one state to another. And not that we could uh, do much help, but still whatever little help we could we could extend by way of arranging transport for them, ensuring sh shelter for, for them, uh, arranging food for them, all that was done by the police. I mean, the police I mean, really went out of their way. And what we saw was police in a new avatar, in a new, in a new form, in a new shape, uh, a new face of the police we saw. And uh, in fact, uh, it restored the faith of many of us in the police and its and its ability and capacity to rise to the occasion. You see, here was a situation, a great, uh, a, a formidable challenge. And there were no SOPs, as I said. And yet, we rose to the occasion and when we won the hearts of the people. Our popularity index went up and uh, uh, in terms of confidence, we won the confidence of lots and lots of people, as the uh, pollsters indicated. Our role was recognized by the media and uh, one leading newspaper of the country, they said, the police are the front line of the front line, which was, I think, saying a lot. Even the prime minister recognized our contribution. And he said that the, the pandemic has shown the sensitive and the, hum and the humane side of the police, and that has touched our hearts. So this compliment coming from the uh, prime minister uh, was a tribute to our functioning, our role and our performance during the pandemic. Uh, I mean, so far, you'll be, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to share this information, but more than 700 police and uh, central alarm police personnel have lost their lives due to pandemic because they are all the time in touch with people. I mean, we can't say that, uh, no, we will work from home. We have to go out. We have to meet with people. We have to interact with them. We have to come, we come into contact with them and uh, extend, I mean, in the process of extending them assistance. So these people have I mean, 700 uh, police and Central Armed Police uh, police personnel have laid down their lives. Uh, on this occasion, we pay homage to them. And uh, uh, I would only, uh, I mean, my request and uh, message for the people of the country is that you should have faith in the police. And in a situation where there are no external pressures, we we appear in a new avatar, uh, which, uh, which you also find uh, very friendly, very people friendly. And uh, 
this is the kind of uh, environment that we want for ourselves an environment where police under normal circumstances works without any external or outside pressures with this this is my message to all of you and i once again thank uh, uh, nigesis for giving me this opportunity and uh, for giving recognition to the great work which policemen have done in this crisis thank you thank you very much sir uh, we are really honored for all the the message that you have given to us and i'm sure we will all follow what you have conveyed just right just now to us thank you very much we have with us dr chinmay parle a, a, a post graduate uh, student or, or let's say a, a person who's passed post graduation and is working in km relentlessly from the beginning of uh, lockdown uh, from the times that we have been remaining safe in the house i think it's dr chinmay who's been working for us uh, fighting at the front line he is one of those covid warriors uh who we actually owe our life to uh, thank you very much dr chinmay for joining us and thanks for uh, i i think the words are not enough we might say thank you again and again we express our gratitude to doctors like you uh that's not enough but we want to hear from you what has been your experience and more importantly as in the future what is it that you would want to Uh, want us to do one thing is for sure we are not going to do anything stupid that puts more pressure on to you uh, that's the commitment on behalf of various uh, of our audiences as well as various uh, corporate executives over to you chinmay good evening sir good evening to us sir at the outset i would like to thank you and thank legacies this is really a wonderful initiative so i would like to say some of my experiences that i have experienced in the last 4 5 months i have been working since march now since the last week of march when the lockdown was first announced so i am a post graduate resident who is working in km hospital since the last 9 years and i have seen a lot of epidemics but this covid 19 pandemic is something that the world has never experienced before and us for us at the ground level it was something very different than what it is for other people who are sitting in their homes in the lockdown so in the beginning when it started when it all started in march uh, last week say 25th 25th march when the lockdown was announced i was there and the number of patients was not so much but the other problems the logistical problems that we had at that time were a lot uh, and those problems was apparently simple you know we didn't have food this is a basic problem it is a basic necessity so all the doctors in km hospital say some 200 300 doctors we did not have foods because there were there were no hotels there were no canteens Uh, our dabba wala had stopped giving us chappas so at that time taj group tata group started giving us tiffins twice a day for the relatives for the patients and for the doctors so those two meals were the only thing that we had uh, in those 15 in the first 15 days of april we used to eat half of the tiffin then the rest of we used to save it for the next day's breakfast and uh, that is how it was uh, things started getting better eventually but then the patient load started increasing so the numbers went in thousands and every day counts initially 10 patients per day 100 then 100 patients per day then 500 and then 1000 patients mumbai being a very populated city very dense city uh, it spread like anything spread like wild wildfire so we had a lot of problems isolating these patients and with the medical resource there being limited with there being a limited number of doctors working it was we had to work long hours and we did not have any problem working long hours per se but in that pp it was very difficult with uh, we used to get all sweaty hungry thirsty and we used to we had to suppress all that and keep working and uh, what happened is gradually this pool of doctors that we had it started getting exhausted some of us started falling sick some of us left for their homes she had some had other family issues and uh, we realized that if this is if this pandemic is progressing at that this rate and if this is what is happening to doctors then something has to be done about it so then we had to fall into administrative uh, stuff also we had to form our own committee we had to form an hr committee in a hospital we had to divide all the pool depending on the how, the seniority the experience into three groups and then we had to you know distribute the working hours 
and uh, distribute the medical resources so that the medical care is also not compromised and yet as doctors we should stay healthy and while all this was going on on a personal levels what we saw was that the patient's condition there is even worse most of the patients in the initial uh, months most of the patients who were brought to a municipal medical setup were abandoned so the families were scared of keeping the parents uh, covid positive parents taking them back once we were ready to discharge them and one you know a lot of patients just lay there unaccompanied for many days multiple days all together some of them the very old ones we didn't even know their names we didn't know what to do so this social stigma is something that i think has been has plagued the society so one message that i would like to give all of us here is that this is the principal thing that we have to avoid because this pandemic it has not discriminated it has not seen any particular age any particular caste any particular religion so today someone else is affected tomorrow it might be one of us so we it is important that we are in this as a group and we take care of each other as you know as human beings so that is one thing that i would like to tell you and yes eventually uh things started things have started improving the lockdown has almost ended and uh it has opened everything has started opening up but we have to be responsible still the pandemic has not gone yet the cases are still increasing so simple measures hand washing wearing masks using sanitizers is something that does not take a lot of time but it is going to, it is going to help us a lot in the long run so this is what i would like to say that you know practice social distancing even if everything has opened up try to avoid social gatherings and try to be responsible citizens first because it is not about us it is about the community as a whole thank you very much thanks a lot chinmay for this take i think uh, uh, this is actually opened up eyes and uh, very few of us know actually and understand what plight the doctors have uh, undergone during this period uh, thank you very much for sharing this with us Uh, all the best for the future thank you uh, stay thank safe you. stay safe for us uh, thank you very much chinmay be in touch thank you good morning good afternoon good evening uh, welcome everybody at compliance 1010 uh, we have with us uh, you know dr r r ganga khedkar and uh, i think uh, at least 1.3 billion indians know him very well by now uh, he is he's been at the forefront of uh, of when the lockdown started at the forefront of all the efforts on behalf of icmr and i think we all know the kind of hard work that has gone into at the at the right from beginning of the lockdown Uh, in terms of covid 19 in compliance 1010 uh, this has been our tradition that as legacies we been uh, expressing our thank you to all the covid warriors all those frontliners who have been fighting on uh, fighting to keep us safe who are actually rendering selfless service uh, notwithstanding the number of hours they have to put up notwithstanding the difficulties that we are facing as a nation uh i think it is our duty uh, and on behalf of 1000 uh, plus indian corporates and bombay stock exchange i take this liberty of expressing our gratitude to dr ganga khedkar uh, sir it has been uh, it has been actually a very overwhelming uh, situation for all of us uh, more importantly i think uh, this is not a black swan event it's a black elephant because we didn't realize the size with which this catastrophe has hit us on one hand i think all of us are struggling on the other hand we are trying to find new norm and in all this i think we must say thank you and thank you is not enough for all those doctors who have selflessly worked for all those healthcare specialists healthcare workers who have rendered these services to us to keep us safe some of them have lost their lives uh, we understand that the pain and agony that their families would be undergoing we are conscious of the fact that uh, not only the leos that the law enforcement officers but there are various other stakeholders uh, in the community 
who are trying to keep us safe we have been safe because you been there sir so on behalf of uh, uh, the doctors community and healthcare specialists i would request you to accept our gratitude i couldn't possibly think of any other person than you who can accept this on their behalf the amount of work and the kind of trend that you have set in at the beginning of the lockdown which has a sustainable effect all through and it has a positive cascading effect till now that we have experienced sir thank you very much and no words are sufficient to say this thank Over. you i thank you all on behalf of uh, all the healthcare workers who are my brothers and sisters who work with me as uh, as a medical fraternity and also other frontline workers uh, i thank bsc legacies to think it appropriate to actually appreciate the role that they are playing as of now to me compliance and ethics were part of my life it's part of our lifestyle if you look at compliance you no know, one of the best examples that you perhaps see is in i i actually worked in hiv for almost more than 3 and 1/2 decades now one of the things which we could ensure only because of adher adherence related issues or compliance to the medications that was given you know we could think in terms of controlling hiv to a tune that today we think hiv is a elimination target for 2030 despite the fact that this is also a viral disease this was also a multi systemic disease this was also one which didn't have vaccine this also didn't have any curative approach available whereby we could make a difference but this was only whatever medications were available people people were compliant to them whatever was being told for preventive measures that was also followed rigorously by patients and the result is very much visible today one must remember that adherence is a critical thing in life you know one of the things when i was working at national aids research institute along with all my scientists our adherence to the sops standard operating procedures made ensured that national aids research institute becomes the fourth laboratory in the world to actually be accredited by world health organization for testing any in vitro tests and accrediting them that they are worth using against hiv hepatitis b hepatitis c and uh, human papilloma virus infection if you look at clinical trials you also find that we are almost all the time audited by the monitors that are there to ensure that we adhere to the standard operating procedures we don't deviate because one must understand that any deviation would always lead to an issue whether we can provide that medicine with confidence to people when you want to use them ethics are also extremely important because ethics if you follow ethics we know for sure that there is no bias and we can actually try and think in terms of providing the medicine or vaccine to others the best example today is non compliance if you were to think in terms of you see the adversities that we are facing actually if you look at semilvis one of the early scientists who showed the importance of hand hygiene in 18th century that if you use hand hygiene women pregnant women would perhaps not suffer from infections and perhaps reduce the mortality to a larger extent we didn't pay much of importance to the same until the 20th century started we had to be reminded again you no know, despite the fact that we understood importance of hygiene you now if you think we had earlier sars where it was emphasized we had mers where it was emphasized we followed it rigorously only at that time and again we forgot and today covid 19 is another example of non compliance but i am sure my brothers are working extremely well the lockdown actually led to a shift of this out curve of outbreak to a tune that you could find 
that the healthcare workers capacity could be augmented the hospitals capacity could be augmented industry responded tremendously well to we we had we didn't have so many personal protective equipment neither diagnostic reagents but what was done was we asked people to respond and industry became atmanirbhar and today we are exporters of the same doctors today are under tremendous pressure they follow their checklist they they are compliant with their own checklist of management today despite the fact that we are second largest country in the world the numbers though they appear to be too large when you compare it with other countries as such but the truth is being second largest we are still able to reduce will we are still able to ensure that the mortality numbers are fairly smaller compared to others and it's all due to doctors their devotion to the checklist their compliance despite the fact that there is a tremendous threat to their own lives but it is just compliance and ethics of human values which are making difference and on behalf of that fraternity i accept this award and dedicate it to all my seen and unseen frontline workers and hope that all of us will strive together even the even the uh, people will become compliant to the advice that is being given about practice of covid appropriate behavior and we will be able to successfully counter the spread of this particular dreaded pandemic covid 19 thanks once again thank you very much sir uh, actually it is it is our pleasure privilege and uh, honor to uh, you know recognize you and uh, say thank you so as i said no words are sufficient uh, but it's just an expression of gratitude thank you very much sir is there any any message that you have to give to us because i think we are we are trying from our own end not to overwhelm the healthcare infrastructure and facilities by doing something stupid you see we are trying to uh, avoid that stupidity uh, notwithstanding whether uh, we work from home uh, or we don't travel now but i think is there any any one message that you would want to give us because people are people are still scared they believe that the challenge is not over neither it is uh, halfway through any message that you want to give to a larger community and indian corporates two messages that i would pass off one what is most important for one to recognize that it is not only government that is responsible for your own health it should be you yourself everything is in your hand now what you just need to do is not going to cost you much it's not going to be difficult to practice but if you do it you will perhaps save all those who are your near and dear ones including your your own self and the community it is time we become responsible for health ourselves and not only depend or point blames or fingers towards government that it is not able to do it it will never be able to do it if we don't become partners to the government you will never be able to stop this particular infection the second thing which i would say is please understand as the lockdown is being lifted now the festivities will start if you want to remain in festive mood please take covid appropriate behaviors very seriously if you don't practice you yourself will reduce these festivities to things which i would not like to speak in words but please don't do that if we do all work together i am sure this challenge can be overcome it's only a question of time you know we have to be patient we have to accept that there will be some sufferings but this is only for you your family and the community thank you thank you very much sir marathi mantat tas tumcha kaam prachand hai we all know that you have tremendous work behind you you have tremendous experience whether it is from john safkin baltimore to new delhi to pune sir uh, it's it's our pleasure privilege and really uh, it's uh, you have 
uh, increased our value quotient in compliance 1010. Sir, thank you very much for being with us and thank you for accepting this thank on behalf you. of the healthcare experts. Thank you very much. Thank you.